راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the first level in the prophetic traditions. And with the first hadith of today, it's a beautiful hadith that is agreed upon its authenticity, which means it has been narrated and collected by both gay imams Bukhari and Muslim and others. May Allah be pleased with all of them. This hadith is narrated by a great companion whose name is Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab the son of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Umar al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. He narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, Islam is built on five, meaning five pillars. Uh, the first is the testimony that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger of Allah. Then establishing the prayers and giving zakah, fasting, during Ramadan and going for Hajj to perform pilgrimage to the ancient house, the Kaaba in Mecca and Mukarrama. With the narrator of the hadith, Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. He is a great companion, a son of a great companion. He was born in Mecca three years after the Prophet وسلم, was commissioned with the prophethood. And he accepted Islam along with his father and they both migrated. Uh, when he migrated to Medina, he was still a young kid under the age of uh, puberty. Accordingly, when he arrived to Medina, he wasn't able to attend the Battle of Badr, nor even the Battle of Uhud. On the Battle of Badr, he was only uh, 13 years old. So the Prophet Wasallam did not accept him to be among the soldiers. Likewise, on the Battle of Uhud, he was only 14 years old. But afterward, he attended, he attended the Battle of Al-Khandaq and the rest of the battles and expeditions with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, he issued fatwas to the people for 60 years. He was such a great scholar and a righteous person. And don't forget, he was also Prophet Muhammad's brother-in-law because his sister Hafsa, may Allah be pleased with her, was one of the mothers of the believers. He lost his eyesight at the end of his life and um, he was the last of the companions to die in Mecca uh, during the year 73 after the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu by the way, he narrated uh, 2,630 hadith. Imam Bukhari himself collected for him over 80 hadith, while Imam Muslim collected over 30 hadith for him. So he is considered one of the great narrators of a hadith uh, at large. He was such a righteous companion, and the Prophet ﷺ praised him and admired him in more than one occasion. And by the way, he was very keen to imitate and copy the Prophet Sallallahu even in the way he walked, in the way he talked, uh, to the extent that after the Prophet Sallallahu passed away, whenever they used to see Abdullah ibn Umar al Khattab coming from far, they would confuse him with the Prophet Sallallahu and think the Prophet Sallallahu had been resurrected or came back to life. May uh, the, the Allah's peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and may Allah be pleased with Abdullah ibn Umar Khattab and his father. Allahumma ameen. So now with the explanation of uh, the phrases of the hadith. The meaning of Islam is built on five. Five what? Five pillars. Five foundations. We're talking about five essentials in Islam. Without them, the person 
is not actually Muslim. So the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the twin testimonies of faith and number two he said establishing the prayers which does not simply mean offering the prayers rather it refers to uh, offering the prayers at fixed times on regular basis every day every night as long as the person is still alive and conscious and to offer the prayer properly, properly with the proper uh, purification facing the qibla proper uh, tranquility and serenity so that's called establishing not just mere offering the prayers uh, with regards to the payment of alms or zakah it means to pay it to those who are eligible in verse number 60 chapter number 9 surah to tawbah the almighty allah listed eight categories of those who are eligible to receive the zakah so when the prophet sallallahu says ita uz zakah to pay the zakat to those who are actually eligible. The pillars of Islam, brothers and sisters, are five. So in order for a person to be a true Muslim, you have to fulfill these pillars and on a regular basis. Uh, some of the pillars, a believer may be exempt because of lacking capacity, such as if the person doesn't have the financial means, he's exempt from given the zakah, but not from paying voluntary charity. A person who is chronically ill would be exempt from observing fasting. Uh, a person who doesn't have the means to perform pilgrimage will be exempt from hajj. But no one is exempt from offering the prayers except women during their menses. The pillars for any building maintain and guarantee the firmness and the stability of the structure. Without him, the building will simply collapse. So after scrutinizing the five pillars and recognizing that a person may be exempt from giving zakah because he is not as rich, from fasting because he or she is chronically ill, a person with renal failure, liver cirrhosis, severe high blood pressure. So the doctor said, you cannot fast. Oh, you cannot fast period then you give the alternative which is the ransom and if a person is poor then exempt from hajj so that's why the most important pillar after the twin testimonies of faith is simply the prayers a person who doesn't pray is not a muslim and the prophet sallallahu explained that in multiple references the difference between us and them referring to non-muslims is the prayer so whoever abandons the prayer has indeed disbelieved. This is the statement of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <clears throat> what do we learn by now from this beautiful hadith, which is one of the essentials of the teachings of Islam? This hadith is an important principle through which one may understand that the ruling and the teachings of Islam, that the five pillars as mentioned before, and they are very essential for every Muslim to observe them. And Islam is based on them. It mentions together all the pillars of Islam. So it is one of the uh, principal ahadith which the entire deen is established upon. Because simply it represents the basic rulings of Islam. And the reason for limiting the pillars to five, and for instance, uh, it doesn't uh, include uh, anything other than the testimonies of faith, establishing the prayers, giving the zakah, fasting during Ramadan, and performing hajj. Um, these are the things which are required on a regular basis from uh, Muslims. And vast majority of Muslims can afford all of them. An average Muslim can afford. Some of those pillars are verbal and some of them are based on action. Such as a shahadatain, the twin declarations of faith, is a verbal pillar, but it must be accompanied with sincere intention. A person who says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ And he or she actually means so. As for the actions, the prayers, 
the fasting, the payment of charity, and the performance of Hajj. The Shahadatain, or the Twin Declarations of Faith, is given precedence over the rest of the pillars of Islam. Why? Because simply it represents the key which will make a person enter Islam. Like it is also the key for a person to enter heaven. Miftahul Jannah is to declare that there is none have the right to be worshipped but Allah and have to do no so from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Then comes the greatest pillar after uh, declaring shahada, which is observing the prayers. Then next in order, the payment of zakah. Uh, then um, fasting during Ramadan. And if you check out and examine the Quran, you will realize that awfully Allah the Almighty commands the establishing of the prayers alongside with the payment of zakah. Aqimu salata wa atu al zakah. And that signifies the importance of the payment of uh, zakah. Then comes fasting, then hajj, because it combines both types of worship, uh, which are basically financial and physical. Financial and physical. When you ask, or when somebody asks, how come the hadith doesn't talk about, uh, for innocence, belief in the prophets, in the angels, in the rest of the books. These are the articles of faith and they will be discussed in the long hadith of Jibreel alayhi salam when he came to ask the Prophet sallallahu about Al-Iman which will be also narrated by the father of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab may Allah be pleased with him and his father. This hadith my dear students, urges us to establish a salah and to offer it properly, not just to offer it, to offer it with the proper khushua, concentration, proper tahara, uh, and pondering over what you recite. That's why the Almighty Allah says in the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun, Qad aflaha al-Mu'minun, meaning successful indeed are the believers. The first characteristic of such successful believers is that they tranquil and they have khushua and serenity in their prayers. The hadith urges us to pay the due zakah to fast during Ramadan and to perform hajj once one is capable to do so and tells us that these are the pillars of Islam like the other pillars. Also jihad is not mentioned there, why not? The scholars looked into the hadith and said properly the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned the five pillars before jihad was actually prescribed. As you know that jihad was only permitted in the beginning after the migration. Before the migration and when Muslims in Mecca, they were not allowed to lift a finger. Also, they said maybe it was not mentioned deliberately afterward because it is not uh, an individual duty in every condition like the prayers or like giving alms or performing hajj rather it's a communal du uh, duty uh, or fardu kifaya here we have to conclude by um, sharing with you that um, if a person declares the shahadatain and offers these five pillars of Islam then uh, he will not abide eternally in hellfire so why not to be saved? He will be saved if his good deeds outweigh the bad deeds, if Allah will pardon him and forgive him his sins. But the Prophet ﷺ informed us that one who have an atom weight of faith in his heart shall not abide eternally in hellfire. So the believers who testify to the oneness of Allah, no matter how much sin they've committed, they will not abide eternally in hellfire. Allah may pardon them immediately and take them to heaven, or he may accept the intercession of the prophets and the angels and the righteous ones, then they will be purified for their sins and hellfire, then eventually they will be rescued and they will make it to heaven, uh, insha'Allah. May the Almighty Allah enable all of us to enter heaven without any previous reckoning, without even uh, seeing hellfire or being touched by its blazing uh, fire. So if a person happens to say, La ilaha illallah, I only believe in Allah. And he doesn't believe in Muhammad, peace be upon him. The second 
uh, segment of the twin testimonies of faith is not a Muslim as well, is not a believer. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, I swear to the one in whose hand my soul is, no one shall hear of me from the people of the book, from anyone who will come afterward, and still doesn't believe in me, but he shall not enter paradise. May the Almighty Allah make us strong and powerful believers and keep us steadfast on the straight path by the end. We seek Allah's guidance. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. Till next time. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي. أكاديمية زاد. زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن والسنة الغراء شارحة له فهما لنا من ربنا وحيان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان